One way of texturing your objects in Lightwave is to use image maps. Uh, in this image here of the Lightwave 9 packaging, uh, I used image maps on fairly basic objects to do the packaging for the box, the book covers, the, the DVD case, and the, the labels here, uh, all using image maps instead of, say, procedurals or gradients. So let's take a look at recreating this box that we can get a taste of using image maps to work with uh, texturing our objects. So I'm going to move over to Modeler and let's create just a quick box. I'm not going to worry so much about scale because I want to focus on textures. So there's our box, A to fit window. And actually, uh, I lied, I'm going to worry about scale a little bit. I'm going to size this up just a little bit and then stretch this in. Let's go to texture mode, texture wire mode, and we're ready to start applying images. Now, if we didn't want, uh, if we don't want all the sides of this box to have the same image, then we're going to need to break up this object into separate surfaces. So to do that, I'm going to select this front facing polygon and I'm going to come down here to surface and it says Q on the button that's the shortcut key Q so surface is change surface but I remember it as quality surfaces so that I can remember that Q is the shortcut key and we'll use that uh, after we create this surface so name I'm just gonna call this front and I also like to even though I'm gonna give it an image map and this color will not show up I also like to give it a color and I'll explain why. I'll go ahead and close that. So it's blue. So if I go and give a new surface name for each one of these polygons and give it a different color, I can easily spot when the image maps aren't being shown that it's got different surfaces. So I'm going to select the top, Q for quality surfaces to change the surface, top, and I'm just going to give it a wild color just so it's dramatically different, and Q. I'm going to do, uh, this is going to be left. There's two sides, so I want to make sure there's a left and a right. So left, and we'll go this color. Color is really not important, just something different so we can spot it right away. Q, and we'll call this right. And let's go with green. And I'll select the bottom polygon of the box, and Q. bottom and we'll make this red and one last one I'm going to spin this around select the back and call this back and let's just make it orange okay so I've got a lot of different uh, surface names here I got six different surface names all different colors so see as you spin around you can go yep each one of those has got a different surface uh, otherwise two of the polygons would be sharing the same the same color so now what I can do is start applying textures instead of just this basic RGB value. So I'm going to head over to my image editor and I'm going to load some images. So back, bottom, front, left, right, top, those are all of our sides. Okay, and we can see them here in the list and we get a little display view right here so we can check it out. If we wanted to see uh, a closer look at this, all we really need to do is double click right here and it opens up, this is a really big image, it opens up our image viewer so we can check out the image. But this is a, a good little thumbnail preview of what we're going to be working with. So I'm going to close that and now we can start applying our surfaces. I'm going to make sure that I'm in texture wire or texture mode so that when I apply the image I can see it uh, in OpenGL. So I'm going to go over to the surface editor. Now we could use the node editor, but right now the node editor won't display it in OpenGL if we apply images here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just go over to the texture editor, but it works both ways, uh, whether you use the edit nodes or the texture editor. Okay, you have the same options. So uh, layer type, we're going to keep it to image map. Go ahead and keep all this the same. For projection, we are going to use planar. We've got planar, cylindrical, spherical, cubic, front, and UV. For this, we're going to use planar. The image, well, I'm working with the back. Right here, we can see in the title bar, it's saying which surface I'm working in. So for the back, I'm going to choose back. Uh, I'm going to map it down the Z. If I Let me go ahead and close my surface editor for a second. We can see that this is the z-axis and, and our back facing polygon, well that's running down the z. 
So I'm going to pick Z and I'm going to click automatic size. Instead of changing my scale down here, if I hit automatic size, it uses the bounding box, the outermost points, to map it. Let's see. Here we go. Now, just discovered something interesting. If we look, this should be 09 and not a backwards 9 and a 0 here. Uh, so we need to flip it. Now, what a lot of people do, especially new users, they go into uh, image editing uh, package like Photoshop or, or uh, even uh, MS Paint and uh, they'll flip the image there but there's really no need if we understand how this is being mapped if our image is being mapped towards the positive well our our back polygon here it would be mapped on the other side going down the negative so what we need to do is across the um, uh, across the X we need to we need to put a negative so we're gonna flip the image in Lightwave there's no need to go and change it outside of Lightwave I can just go and put a negative right here in the X axis that's the axis that the image is running across so if the positive was backwards well I'd, I'll just make it negative and we'll have to do that um, a couple times while we're texturing uh, in order to get this mapped properly. Make sure that you map your textures uh, correctly or you'll have back, backwards images which is which is never good. So I'm going to use the texture so as you can see we're we're almost there. We got one out of the way and we're just gonna continue down the path. So let's go to the front. So surface editor we'll pick front, T for texture editor, image map, projection planar, image, we'll pick front Okay, we can see that it's not the right scale, and I could go in and manually scale this, but I'm just going to take advantage of automatic sizing, and it fits it to the bounding box to the outermost parts, which on a box works perfect. So, use texture. Let's go to top, T for texture editor, top. Now the top needs to be mapped down the Y axis. This polygon is facing the Y, and automatic size use texture. Let's go to the bottom and we'll go to T for texture editor, planar, uh, bottom. We need to map it in the Y as well. Let's do automatic size, but let's zoom in because I want to just see, uh, light wave is backwards. That's not going to work for us. Now, should I go into the X and type in a negative? Well, that worked for us um, when we were doing the back image, but for the bottom, this texture is being mapped across the Z, it's it's through the Y, uh, but across the Z, so actually we need to flip it in the Z. And now when we zoom in, we'll see that Lightwave is, is going in the right direction. Okay, so we just got two more faces to do. Let's hop over to left, which will be this face right here. T for texture editor, image. We'll choose left. We're gonna map it, um, texture axis X, automatic size, we got a backwards texture again. So for the axis, which axis is it? It's it's through the X. You know, the X is running this way, but it's across the Z. So we'll do the same thing we did for the bottom and put a negative value. And now we've got this facing the right direction. And use texture. And we'll go over to the last surface, which is right. And in the color channel, we'll go to the texture editor, image. We'll go to right. We're mapping it on the X. Automatic size. Looks like it matches up. So we're good to go there. Use texture. And let's go full screen with this viewport. And if I take texture wire off and just go to texture, we'll see that we've got our, our box here. Okay. Now, if we want to dress it up, because right now, it's a hard edge. If we wanted to have kind of rounded edges, which if we go back to our object here, you can see a little bit of speck hit here, a little edge there. Um, you, you rarely want a hard, crisp edge. Usually you want it to be a little rounded. Uh, that's the way it is in the real world, so we try and match what's in the real world. So even though uh, I'm really wanting to show textures, I'll just show a quick way to go about making those uh, a little rounded. Now that we've already got it textured and we just need to add some, we just want to add some rounding polygons to this. Okay, so I'm just going to keep that zoomed in. Let's go to texture wire and it's black so I'm having trouble seeing it on this black surface. So I'm going to go over to detail, sketch color, 
and let's just um, let's go with in this case let's go with white we'll really be able to see it that way okay I usually like working with dark blue or black but um, white also comes in handy when you're working with dark surfaces like this and this is on a, uh, a per polygon basis so I could kind of mix these up but we had went ahead and used sketch color on all the polygons let's go over to the multiply tab we want to round this off there's a couple ways of doing it but I like rounder so I'm going to click rounder in for numeric and I can choose how many polygons do I want to round. Well, right now it's doing three. If I want it, I could increase that, get some uh, get some new geometry in there. And um, for the inset distance, I can really round this off, or which I really don't want to do. Let's do 50, 50 millimeters. Okay. And so now we have it rounded. Now you're if I go ahead and commit to that, you're not seeing the white. Uh, sketch color on this wireframe because it's newly created geometry and if I wanted to change that I could go back to detail sketch color white so what's driving this edge to uh, to be black when it's first created well if I go to D for display options the default sketch color is set to black I can set it to any of these colors so any new geometry created will be uh, we'll have a black sketch color but anytime I want to change it so let's just grab these polygons and go to sketch color and we'll make these uh, let's do green okay and so now those are green so you can mix it up sometimes it's easier to see certain things let's go back to texture and you can see that let's um, get at this angle you can see now we got a rounded box so quick way to do a box also a really quick way to uh, to pick up some clientele because uh, a lot of uh, companies out there have product that comes in packages so quick way to go about recreating the in this case the Lightwave 9 box uh, but uh, really what we were uh, looking at is using image maps for texture so whether your image maps come from photos that you take or uh, textures that you hand paint or manipulate in Photoshop um, this could be a solution for getting them mapped onto your geometry